Hi guys, welcome to our video, Tamarindo Explained. And in this video, we're going to be explaining Tamarindo, just as the title says. We're gonna be breaking this video down into a couple main sections. First, we're going to be explaining the geographical layout of Tamarindo. Then next, we're gonna be going over some activities, local cuisine, and different beaches that you might wanna surf at, because I'm a big surfer, and if you are too, you like this video. And we've been living here for the past five months, so we have some good information to share with you. We're gonna break Tamarindo kind of into three different zones. The north, the south, and the inland a little bit. Just <laughs> away from the beach, because yeah. Tamarindo has grown. It used to be just a little beachfront town, but now they're progressing and working inland. So there's so much to see once you step off the beach. And then there's another area called Playa Langosa, which we'll mention in this part as well. So most likely the way that you're going to be coming in to town is this main intersection where Villa Real is and you can head down the road down into Tamarindo. So the first area that you're gonna see is the Auto Mercado, which is this really nice, big, fancy grocery supermarket area. So if you wanna step outside of the local feel, that's where you're gonna get more of the higher end luxury. Yeah, it's kind of like the bougie American section. I wasn't going to say that, but that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next area kind of going down from there is going to be around Witch's Rock. There's a lot of surf companies right around there that rent boards, do lessons, because that's where a lot of the main surfing is at, right here in the central part of Tamarindo Beach. I like the OG neighborhood of when Tamarindo started. You yeah. Surf and you came to Tamarindo, you're going to be near Witch's Rock. Just across the street from Witch's Rock and that whole area off the beach is a lot of hotels and Airbnbs. But the thing to be aware of, you'll be looking, they'll all, they'll all say five minute walk from the beach, which is true. But the elevation, as soon as you get off the beach, goes straight up. Now, not all of them are up on the hill, but a lot of them are up on a big hill. Expect to hike or get a cab. Yeah, that's a cool place. There's a lot around there, but it's not really central right. to everything. If you're into diving, there's an amazing dive shop here called Tamarindo Diving. And they took me out on an amazing dive at the Catalinas Islands. Definitely worth checking out. Tamarindo Diving offers a great experience. They take you out on the boat. And it's not just diving, it's the whole boat ride out to the Catalinas Islands. That's just incredibly beautiful. Dolphins, turtles mating. Uh, and then the dive was full of wildlife as well. Definitely worth doing if you're into diving or even snorkeling. Next is going to be the south part of town. So you, you come in through the north way and you're still driving on the beachfront road and you just keep going straight. Eventually you will end up in a roundabout. So it, essentially it's a dead end there. But during that roundabout, there are where most of the bars are, the dance clubs, the um, beachfront restaurants, tons of cute little boutique for shopping. If you're a shopper, just start at one end and walk all the way down and around and come back up through. So instead of going straight towards the downtown area, you'll see this left-hand turn. It almost seems like you're supposed to go left. Yeah. And so if you head left, now you're on like another main strip where there's a lot of other food courts right along this road. There's a couple bars, but you'll see another left-hand turn. If you go left, it's gonna bring you to the skate park. And now the cool thing about the skate park is actually sitting right behind us, is it's a park for kids to play at, but it's also where the Saturday morning market is at. If you guys have been watching our channel for a bit, you know that I love a good market. And this farmer's market has everything that you would expect, right? Fresh fruit, vegetables, handmade crafts, um, juices, music, kids playing. It's definitely worth a walk if you're yeah. here on a Saturday morning. Yeah, it, it's a lively market, lots happening. So that's really cool. It says eight to one, but it's period of Vita. So maybe don't stroll into like 8.30 or nine if you wanna see all of the vendors already set up. If you go back out to the main street, and you keep going up, you'll see a intersection that you can go two ways. You can go straight or right. Right there in the corner is Via. Very obvious. It's gorgeous, it's brand new, it's really clean looking. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a great sushi restaurant in there, a lot of food options. Our favorite ice cream place is there called Pan Iosuga. It's definitely worth checking out. They have these wonderfully delicious sugar-coated bread cones. And the owners are so kind yeah, and just love to give you sugar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So at this intersection now, if you were to go straight, you're gonna be going to the inland a little bit area of town. And it kind of covers more than just this little spot, but you have the Vindi as soon as you go right past the really nice complex we were just talking about, 
And the Vindi is another small, nicer grocery store. But the main thing I wanna talk about is the bank that's attached to it as well. That has the best ATM in town if you need to pull out some money. You can pull out dollars or colonies there. So it's easy to use. And speaking about money, here in Tamarindo, they will accept US dollar and Costa Rican colonies. But if you leave Tamarindo, most places don't want to take U.S. money. So if you're going to pull money out, I would pull out Colonus. And unlike 15 years ago, um, credit cards and debit cards are widely accepted. The conversion rate to the U.S. dollar to Colonus is one U.S. dollar to about 550 Costa Rican Colonus. So everything you're buying here is like in the thousands. So a little rule of thumb that makes it easier is that if something is two dollars us it's going to be one thousand colonus <laughs> that was a bug we have this tiny little bug that just it's hanging just out it's just loving my smelling our bits oh i'm not so <laughs> <laughs> so now working your way past the vendee you're going to be heading towards the thursday night market which is really popping yes live music the sun's already down there's strung up lights and um a lot of life young old local tourists everybody is there just like the saturday morning market there are still vendors selling jewelry and food it's just geared more towards nighttime phase and uh, yeah. we try to go every thursday because there's always new music um you see familiar faces yeah it's a lot of fun it's definitely worth checking out but it's right here so now heading back to that three-way intersection if you take a right at that intersection or you start heading south, we're gonna be going back into kind of the south area of town. And there is a bike shop there called Handlebar, and that is kind of a unique place. It's a bar, it's a small restaurant, but primarily they rent bikes and they've got really good deals, especially if you're staying for more than a day or two. Um, and bikes are great around here. You can really get anywhere you need to be within this area. During the busy season, it's hard to drive a car around town because it's so busy, there's like no parking. So really bikes are a fantastic option and you can ride them on the beach at low tide. Past the handlebar on the right on the corner is a food truck neighborhood. I mean, they have, I don't know, a dozen or two food trucks just lined up side by side by side. Um, it's a party I feel like every night if you walk by. So if you were to keep walking down that dirt road towards the beach from the food truck area, that's where all of the boats pretty much pick everybody else up for catamarans, fishing, whatever else you might be doing. Okay, so now we're at Nordico Coffee, filming this section right here. See the logo in the background. And this is one of our favorite cafes in town. And if you're super, super into coffee, they have the best coffee in town because they roast it here themselves. Uh, Olaf is amazing, come support them. So we got to experience Playtide Catamaran. Playtide is a catamaran charter company that picks you up on the beach like Matt was talking about. They provide everything for the entire day and take you out to sea. There's lunch, there's drinks, paddle boarding, snorkeling. It's pretty much a, a full experience offshore that you can't get anywhere else or any other time. Yeah, and if you come to Tamarindo, you really have to get outside of the bay here because inside the bay, the water's pretty, but the coastline, as soon as you get outside the bay, is absolutely stunning. It's definitely worth doing, especially a sunset tour. And depending on what time of year it is, there's turtles and whales, Dolphins. all the things, yeah, that you can't see just hanging out on the beach. So now we're gonna keep heading south down this main road to Langosta. Now, on the way to Langosta, or really the start of it, is one of our favorite beaches in town called Suisos. It's a great place to hang out, a good place for beginners to surf. So that beach is unofficially called Suiso, and everybody knows where you're going if you say that. Yep. Yeah. And now if you continue past there, there's a lot of different restaurants. It's kind of a quieter part, not as busy beach down in Langosta. It's totally different than the beach here in Tamarindo. It's all rocks, it's beautiful. It's maybe not the best place to go play in the water with your kids, but it's an amazing place to just sit and relax and to see an incredibly beautiful beach. Talk about the surfing that's right here in this general area. Right now we are at Suizos, which Suizos is towards Langosa, but it's really the best place as a beginner to learn. It's my favorite. Yeah, this is where Erica comes because the waves are a bit more relaxed. They don't have as much power, which makes it a little bit of a safer, easier ride. Now your next best go-to if you're learning is the main Tamarindo Beach. 
The waves there do have a little bit more power, and the reason why you would think, well, it's just down the beach a little bit, what's the difference? Well, here in San Marino, we're in a big bay pretty much, and a lot of the beaches are protected from the waves. Suizos is like the most protected. Still has little waves though. Tamarindo is a little bit more exposed. And then you keep going and you get to Playa Grande. It's a massive beach, but all the waves just come right into the bay and crash a lot bigger, a lot more powerful there. But the other closer best bet is Langosta at the river mouth. And that is a really fun place to surf. There's a lot of bigger waves there. It's stronger. There are rocks out there, so it's really advanced surfers only, especially at that beach break. Speaking of Langosta, I'm a beginner and Matt took me out there on a small day and I came home with stitches. <laughs> so you um, advanced surfers have at it. Not so much for the little guys. Okay guys, now it's time to talk about restaurants. Foodie time. Yes, and <laughs> there is an unbelievable amount of restaurants here in Tamarindo. You guys, unbelievable amount. You'll get more than just rice, beans, plantains, and chicken. Yeah. It, there is so much here. But if you do want traditional cooking, Matt's got the soda for you. And what we didn't know when we first got here was what soda meant. And we we're driving down the highway, looking at all the signs, just seeing everywhere soda, soda. And we thought that Costa Ricans just love soda pop, but it's <laughs> local restaurants. There's two sodas that I really want to talk about that I recommend going to. The first one, I'm looking down at my phone for the name, is Soda Buffet El Estro. And that Estero. is that I always say it wrong. <laughs> but Eric owns that. It's an amazing soda to go eat at. It's in the north part of town. I'll show you on the map right here where it is. And the food there is great, healthy options. And it's a great meal for after serving. The next one is, I don't even know the name or her name. It's, I just call her the Red Van Lady. And uh, she's right here on the main street. I'll show that on the map as well. And if you just walk down, it's 3000 colognes for just like a to-go box of amazing, I don't, you don't even know what it is. I just tell her to give me her favorite and I'm never disappointed. Well, it switches every day. She makes it at home, brings it in her van and you get what you get. Yeah, it's just a bunch of pots in the back of the van. It's amazing. It's actually, honestly, some of the best tasting food that I've had here in Tamarindo. If you are coming with a variety of ages, let's say grandma, grandpa, and the kids are coming, we have the place for you and it's called the Surf Shack. It's like an open air restaurant, tons of seating, and in the very, very back is a full playground. It's just a really cool place. You can actually go and sit, and it's right off the beach. So they're located in the downtown area, and the type of food that they have is kind of more like burgers, messy fries, and delicious wings. The food there is really good. It's just a really nice place at the end of the day if you want to go hang out. We found out about this restaurant called Dragonfly, and how I heard about it was their Maisie Sushi. But little did we know, when we got there, a sushi, the sushi is just like a small part of their menu. So Dragonfly is definitely on the higher end side of the restaurants here in town. It's a bit more fine dining, although you don't necessarily have to dress crazy fancy to go there. It's just the quality of the food is fine dining quality. Definitely go there to check it out. It's a perfect date night or they're kind of a quieter, chill, live music vibes. Yeah. It's a wonderful place to go and would highly recommend Dragonfly. So Erica has something that's totally in her realm. Surfing is in mine. I know I'm not the only one out there. So if you're one of those weirdos that pack your tennis shoes on vacation, you're welcome. Because in Tamarano, there is like indoor rock climbing, at least three gyms with you know, weights inside, yoga, silks, all of the things. If you have something you love, more than likely it is here. So bring your shoes and your energy. You will get a workout. So guys, thank you so much for watching our video, Tamarindo Explains. Be sure to like and subscribe. Boom.